here we are, and we are ready to get started. So, what uh, what do we need to make this work? Um, we're kind of we're kind of standing at the uh, at the beginning of a long journey here, where we want to uh, we want to build a device from scratch. So the device that we pick needs to have three things. We need to have the source code for the kernel available, and by law they are required to put that out. But a lot of home companies don't or at least they delay as long as possible. And uh, so that's not always the case that you get that kernel source code, but we need the kernel source code because without it, you can't build a custom ROM or anything for a device. Uh, we also need a phone that has an unlocked bootloader. If the bootloader is locked, we can build all day long, but we won't be able to put it on the phone. And uh, the third thing that we need is root access. So, um, Perhaps you could do it without root access, but I don't think so. Um, I think that it's a definite must. So if there's no root access to your phone that you want to build for, uh, it's pretty much going to be impossible to do. So here we are. We're at the beginning of our journey here. And uh, how do we get started? Well, we did some research last time into our phone. We're using the Blue Life One X2, which we're going to call the Block 2 for ever now um, and we made some uh, we made some bookmarks and uh, of some some different uh, different things that are going to help us so what I did is I just created an empty repository and just put a readme in here to say hey this is our blue life one x2 um, work in progress uh, Git instance here. I did this on GitLab um, and a pretty useful uh, place, especially since uh, GitHub just got bought out by Microsoft. Um, not going to take time to comment on that. But anyways, uh, so what we can do is we're going to need um, a place for working on our instant. And I'm just going to call this GitLab, and we're going to put all of our Git stuff in GitLab. Okay, if that makes sense. And we're going to CD into GitLab. And what we want to do is Git clone. And we're going to clone this repository into it, which is pretty small right now because there's really nothing in there. Okay, we're going to exit out of that. We don't need that anymore. So what we now have is a little working area for our Blue Life 1X2. So let's go back to our home folder. We'll go to Lineage OS, and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to the device folder. We're going to make a new folder, and we're going to call that Blue. So the way this typically works is obviously you have um, device, the vendor name, and then the name of the actual device you're working on. So we'll make a new folder here and we'll call this life one X two. All right. And we'll open that up and let's go to our GitLab and we're gonna open this. We're gonna grab our readme. And we're going to put it in there. This will make more sense in a, in a little bit. So, if we open up Lineage right now and we say we're going to build that, let's say Lineage OS Marshmallow, here we go. And we set up our build environment, build environment setup.shell. If you need help with this, uh, please remember that I have a previous video series. Uh, for more of the beginner intermediate level where we're looking at how build environment setup works and how we build ROMs, that sort of thing. We're, we're past the building regular ROMs point. This is kind of more of the advanced tutorial of how we're going to build a device from scratch. So if you need help with any of these commands that we're talking about, please go back and see my previous videos. 
So we've set up uh, our, our environment and we're just gonna run the lunch command, okay? And we look and we can obviously see that the block two is not on there, right? So we're gonna press control C. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna add it as a menu item. Now a lot of people might disagree with me on that, but, but I really feel like that's where we need to start. So how do we do that? What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new document, empty document. We're gonna call that vendor setup dot shell. We open this up and we're gonna um, have to add something to it. Now, if you're not sure how these are supposed to look, that's fine. Uh, keep in mind, you can always, uh, you know, jump on, you know, DuckDuckGo or Google. Um, let's put DuckDuckGo on here. I'm just gonna make this my uh, homepage here. Yeah, I don't know. Here, let me do that again. Is that our homepage? Yes. Okay. So if we just type vendor setup dot shell, we search for that, then you can see, um, you know, different ones on here. So. Let's see. Um, well, this is somebody that had a problem with theirs. Let's do this off of GitHub right here. Mm -hmm. So we see a vendor setup dot shell. And now you can add these for and if and done blocks, but what we just need is this right here. Um, add lunch combo and what it is that we want to add. So we'll just copy that. We'll go back here. We're going to add a lunch combo, but we're going to build lineage underscore life one x two dash uh, user debug we're going to add a couple of them here we add user user debug and eng for engineering build so now we've got this vendor set up and now when we run our environment we set it up again Notice that this time it's going to take this device blue life one x two vendor setup dot shell. And now when we run lunch, what do we see? We see lineage life one x two eng user and user debug. So now we can actually choose it from the menu. Of course, if we choose it right now, it's not going to work. Obviously, we don't have anything that we need to make this function. And when you run the launch command, it tries to look locally. If you don't have the files locally, then it tries to retrieve it from the repository online. And obviously this device is not in the repository online. So there we go. Now we've, we've taken that first step of setting up. So let's uh, take the work that we just did. We'll leave that for a minute. And now we just can copy everything in here and we paste it in there and we say, yep, we want to replace everything in here. And the reason we want to do this, we have a new terminal, CD, GitLab, CD, Android. Now we can say git status and we see we've made a change. So we want to keep pushing all of our changes. Every time we do something new that whether, really whether it works or not, we want to push those changes up, particularly if they work, but if they don't, we can still revert back to previous versions. So we're going to get add everything. We're going to get uh, commit this. We're going to put a little message on it. It says added vendor 
set up shell file. And it's, I think, really important. And we'll just get push to push that up. I think it's really important to um, try to give a commit message that really tells somebody looking at it what it is that you've just done. And of course, if we refresh our page up here, we see we've got this commit here. So we've added our vendor setup shell file, and there we go, we see it on there. So that was our first step, and uh, let's uh, continue on in the journey.